Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. This is Stasia Bliss, and I am so grateful you're here. This video is about sacred union, divine relationship, new paradigm relationship, whatever you want to call it. It's just not the old paradigm. <laughs> it's not where we've come from, it's where we're going to. So I wanna start with a little story from Hindu mythology to kind of show where I'm going with this, but this is the evolution of relationship and it really takes healed people or people that are doing their inner work. Of course, we may be never truly healed, but we can be integrated. Those people coming together for higher um, consciousness union is what this world really needs. So we're in a transition point uh, these eclipses coming up are shifting us back like over into the relationship axis um, or Virgo Pisces, sorry. We have been in the relationship axis and we are shifting to a spiritual. So it's like the relationships get worked on and then we were working into this, how to bring the spiritual into the mundane. And we've been having this like relationship lesson and a lot of that is through failures and through um, mishaps and so forth. So anyway, so the story I want to go to is the story of Shiva. In Hinduism, he is the ultimate man. He's consciousness itself. He is, you know, rugged. He's an aesthetic. He's covered with human ash, meaning he's transcended the worldly attitudes. He's in divine union with god consciousness he's an aware awake balanced pure masculine man and he finds sita and she's his beloved his consort and he sees her as an equal and they marry but of course she's a, a daughter of a brahmin and the brahmin is the high caste in india and it's um, he was an aesthetic so he's renounced the world he basically has no status um and the father is not really like down with this marriage showing like the world is not really like it when we renounce the world I'm just gonna move that just a little bit it's like the world has an ego too right um but we are trying to tap the anamundi the world's soul we're trying to tap the soul of what is trying to evolve here in the overall story so Anyway, um, Sati and his, her father is inviting everyone to come and celebrate and invites all the other Brahmins and um, was having some sort of gathering but did not invite Shiva. Did not think Shiva could hang with the Brahmins and therefore disrespected the Divine Feminine, his daughter, by not invi inviting her husband. And so to show that this is not okay in this story and of course this is a lot of this is very symbolic to understand she throws herself on the funeral pyre she throws herself on i guess we we're at a funeral but anyway she throws herself on the fire and she is incinerated she dies so she makes a sacrifice for her beloved now in Hindu mythology, reincarnation is a part of the story. So we see the characters come back again as we see the evolution of them. And so Shiva is completely distraught. Like he loves Sati. Sati is like, or Sita, sorry. No, no, Sita is wrong. Sati, yeah. Sorry, all these names get mixed up sometimes. Is his beloved and he's so depressed after this. Um, and he ends up going with all of the his friends, the other gods, and like, you know, to help alleviate his sorrow, making holy places out of all the pieces of her around India. And those are all pilgrimage sites. But anyway, so he goes back to his meditation and, you know, he's just going to be alone because that was too painful, you know, and he's basically like, I'm never going to love again. And then um, Sati reincarnates as Parvati and she seeks out and she finds her beloved again. And she notices that he is staying in his meditation that he's devout that he's just not going anywhere he's staying within and she's like but that's my guy and so she just sits with him and she begins her penance and her meditation and her sadhana and she works on herself next to him 
And she does this and goes so deep within herself that her field becomes known to him. He begins to understand that she too is doing what he's doing and it makes him feel familiar. And then he realizes this is his wife. And so then they are together. So an interesting story and it really is showing like higher divine love, right? So we all know what codependent attachment style love, um, conditional love, we know what this looks like because the world is prevalent. Now we do have some older couples who've been together a long time that have exemplified a beautiful example of unconditional love, many, many of them. Um, but then there are many examples of unsatisfied, disgruntled, or control freaks, or people who are just, you know, suppressing the life of their partner and so forth. Um, and basically not acting, like acting out the lowest possible denominator in relationship. Well, maybe not the lowest. Lowest would be like your partner's a slave. And in some areas of the world, that's still true. And in some domains of consciousness, that's true for some people. So as a person transforms and goes through, because we kind of have to dip into and go through the layers of relationship dynamics to even kind of remember what part of the journey we're on with it, right? And to kind of skip through those and maybe have some hard lessons in codependency or attachment or abusive relationships or whatever to like remember ourselves and our worth and our divinity and to turn attention back to self and to, you know, like let oneself become radiant and shine and let the souls speak to each other, right? So in a divine or sacred partnership, unconditional love really can show up because each person has gone through, if you will, like their dark nights of the soul, their deepest, deepest, most painful, low places where they have ceased to judge now because they themselves have been there, have been in the place where others judge, right? And so this cultivates a, a bigger heart and a deeper understanding that makes it natural to love unconditionally. You know, without some of these leveling experiences, and as I would say in the tower archetypes um, series that you can check those out on this channel too, like the tarot, uh, the tower levels you, right? We talked about that recently, it just levels you, which is very humbling, which is very uh, preparatory and initiatory, it's a rite of passage into a deeper way of love an ability to love, a space to love, but only if you like take the diploma, if you will, if you, if you agree to that. I mean, you can like talk shit about it all you want for as long as you want and woe is me and pity party and this all happened to me. Like that can be your story as long as you want until you decide to turn it in your favor and recognize the, la the layers at which you're moving through ancestrally to get to the next one. And many of us have the soul knowing that we came here to be in divine union. Like we just know it in our soul. And even if we haven't made it there yet, we will not be discouraged by the previous mishaps and traumas and dramas. That doesn't mean we won't take a minute to recalibrate. That's a great idea. And shows maturity and patience and understanding and all of that. And, but then to again recognize the quest is not complete until the treasure is found, right? Like you could be a pirate searching for a treasure, like lifetime after lifetime, what you're, you're gonna like give up right before you get the treasure because you're just too like depressed from all of your treasure hunting that, that did, by the way, bring you treasures, just not the one you know you're meant to find. Not like the chalice and the, the holy grail, right? But other treasures have been found. Strength, fortitude, perseverance, wisdom, resilience, deeper capacity for love, forgiveness, 
honor. These are treasures that we obtain on our journey to divine union. And if you haven't been able to look back at previous relationships and find those treasures yet, have a session with me. Like that's what I do best. That's why I do this work publicly is because I've done this work personally. I've gone into some of the toughest issues in relationships that I've had to face in my life and decided to turn it around and make it a wisdom moment, make it something that I actually came here to do in order to be the best partner that I could be when the time came. Like I could fail in all the ways so that I could get it right for my beloved. That's what I really feel like I've done to prepare myself to do all the things that I'm not going to do with my person. I didn't purposely, <laughs> but on a soul level, maybe, you know, to hurt and be hurt, to react and respond wrongly or badly or less maturely, right? These are the steps on the way to maturity. These are the steps on the way to wisdom. These are the steps on the way to divine union. You know, the failures are the stepping stones. So when it starts coming in, as it will start coming in more and more, it's actually a needed event. We need divine unions to take the ascension process to the next level, to raise the consciousness of humanity. We need solid, loving, divine unions. And that's what's going to start happening more and more. So if you are knowing you are here preparing for that, what you can continue to do is look back at your relationships and find the gems, right? Find the purpose and the reason for those, you know, difficult situations, why you would have chosen that on a soul level as an evolutionary learning experience for you. That's the shadow work. You know, why would I put someone in my life who controlled me and suppressed me of all of my joy and my natural urges? Well, for one, that was something I faced so I could learn to honor myself and honor my joy and honor who I am as a person and find value in that, not based on what somebody else said, but based just purely from within. You know? There's so many paths we could take with this, you know, financially, why did I let someone else take care of me or why did I take care of someone else? The financial empowerment is a big piece that a lot of us must learn. You know, there's so many parts, right? You could tell any part. If you need help with that, reach out. But um, as we're transferring into a divine union grid, if you will, you know, we're purging, letting go of things that will not align, that will not plug in or fit into this sacred union template for humanity. Because this is ushering in greater healing for the planet. This ushers in so many other areas in which we need to up level in our medical, in our law, in our government. All these things have to be led by union. They have to be led by divine union. It can't be led by one powerful person and like a small person behind them or any like distorted version of masculine feminine it has to be love love leads the way love heals love transforms the world so we've been in a, a university of love university of self-love first and then when we truly do love ourselves it's easy to love another even in all of their stuff even all their faults like, if you can do that for yourself, you can do that for anyone. Trust me. <laughs> you can love another person. I mean, if you can love yourself in all the things you've done that you, you know, don't think you should have done or you think you did wrong or other people judge you, if you can love all those parts, your deep, dark places, your secret caves, your hidden places, your skeletons, skeletons in your closet, if you can love and accept all those parts of you, then you can turn to another person with all of their stuff and their skeletons and you can love them. It's actually easy to do because that compassion you cultivate for yourself flows out from you. And you know that person because you know their struggle, you know their pain, 
and that you don't have to relate on that level, but you can just love them through it and like see the divine in them and all that stuff doesn't matter anymore. You're like fresh people. So this is a beautiful journey that we're on. And, um, you know, those of you who aren't, aren't on it probably aren't watching this video, but um, if you are and you're here, thank you so much for making it this far, for being here, for having the heart to work through all these relationship you know, issues in your life and to make it this far and to even still have enough faith and hope in love, you know, why we came to continue the journey forward. So cool. Okay, much love to you. I love you so much. I appreciate you. I'm so grateful and honored to be here. And namaste. See you next time.